Okay, today I'm doing my fuel pump on my 2005 Ford F-150. It is a crew cab model. On all the crew cabs, you're going to have to pull the tank. Uh, it's a fairly easy job. I thought it was going to be rough, but it, it was easy. A lot easier than pulling the bed back when you're working, especially when you're working by yourself. Anyways, I uh, to get a little history on the truck. It's got 215,000 miles. Uh, I was on the freeway and I tried to accelerate hard and it just seemed like it was starving for fuel. It was shuddering, falling, you know, falling on its face. Well, I get back to the house and I get out of the truck, the truck's still running, I hear this slight grinding noise coming from down underneath it, around the fuel tank. So I when I opened the gas door and I pulled the cap and I put my ear down here and I could hear inside the tank the pump was making a, a slight grinding noise. It was, it was going bad. I mean 215,000 miles is pretty much a maintenance thing at that point. Uh, so what I did is I got the car to the garage and uh, I got ready to start taking. I figured I was going to take the tank out. Um, so basically why I'm doing this video is just to give you guys an idea of what I did to get it out. If you guys could streamline it, awesome. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, don't beat me up too bad about this. I'm doing what I can. I don't do videos. Anyways, uh, what I did is I disconnected the battery, uh, first thing. And then I chalked the front tires, blocked them up. And then I came back and I lifted the back of the vehicle. And I put jack stands underneath the rear axles. And got the tires off the ground about four or six inches and then after I did that I came over here opened the gas door and I took these three seven millimeter screws out and then I took a, a two small flat blade screwdrivers and I there's a tab here and a tab here I put the screwdrivers in there and I pulled down on them a little bit and when I did that I was able to rock the top of the fuel door back and get it out of the way and then after that, I came down here, and this, the fuel, uh, the line for the tank was connected here with a clamp, and it was connected to the hose for the tank with a clamp. Uh, I was able to get to this clamp. Clamp was turned like this. I loosened it up with a 7 millimeter. I got the clamp back, and I was able to get this to come down some because it was still connected to the hose it was still up you know it was tight tight in there i couldn't get my hand in there to uh take my seven millimeter uh, ratcheting box wrench to loosen up the other clamp because the other clamp was in this type of position up in there it was up, turned this way and it was facing upward so what i opted to do at that point was i took off this pencil bracket that is on the bed and I loosened up three 13 millimeter bolts and I took the bracket right out of the way then I was able to get my hand up in there with the seven millimeter and loosen up that clamp get that clamp off and then what I did is I took a flat a large flat blade screwdriver and I worked it in between the the metal tube and the hose and I slowly started loosening it up. I'll show you out here on this. I started loosening it up and I worked around there till it come it was loose. I didn't want to do it too hard because I didn't want to rip the hose. Well at that point what I did was I I grabbed this and I just gave it a, a tug and it, it came right out of the hose. So that was a good thing. The vent tube was still connected to the tank. It's a metal line, and then it goes to a rubber hose, and then to the clip that holds it to the attachment to the tank right here. Okay, I'll get to why I cut this in a minute. Anyways, I got underneath the truck, and I took two ratchet straps, and I put the ratchet straps onto the tank uh, from the frame to up into that part of the frame, hooked it on, and I ratcheted it up. 
I did two of them, both one in the front of the tank, one in the back. Snugged them up. I didn't tighten them too tight, but I did snug them up. And then I came back here and I disconnected the EVAP canister line here. And then I disconnected the fuel filter and the other EVAP line. And then what I did is I, I was looking at it and I noticed that if I undid these straps and try to get them to swing down, it would hit the shaft. So I had to pull the drive shaft. And then I just brought it to the ground and pushed it over as far as I could, as far as it would go off to the side. But after I did that, I noticed I could sit between the exhaust and the tank, sit up, and I could see just about everything up there. So what I did at that point, while the while the, the tank was still in place, and I had my safety straps on there, my ratchet straps, I uh, uh, loosened up the ratchet straps. I put a jack under the tank, and I took these straps. I took these straps down, took them down. I got them to swing, and I was able to turn it and get it down, get it out of the way. Sorry about the camera. I'm using a cell phone, you guys, so it's gonna, at least not the greatest. These iPhones. Anyways, same with this one. Loosen it up. It was no longer hitting the shaft. I could get it up and get it out of the way. Okay, once I did that, I put the floor jack underneath the tank and I started. I lowered the tank a little bit, about three, four inches. And then I could see everything. I could set, I sat back up in between there and I could see everything, the top of the fuel pump and all the connections to it and everything. This line right here is the uh, vent, vent for the fuel tank. I can move this around and turn the, the, uh, the fitting. And then this here, this comes off of the, uh, a sensor on top of the tank it's the fuel pressure tank transducer sender sensor excuse me and then I would usually all you have to do is you push that down and pull it back it comes right off this one is on the fuel pump itself what you do have to do is you have to push this tab down and push that lock that way and then you can push this down and slide that back okay well anyways before I did that like I said, I lowered the I lowered the tank about four inches, and I was able to do it. Now, the reason why I cut this is so I could show you guys on video. This is my truck. I can pretty much do what I want with it. It's just a vent tube, so I'm going to put a 3 8 barb fitting in there and a couple clamps, and it'll be fine. Um, when I was in the underneath there, and I could see on top of the tank, I could wiggle this around. I took a small flat blade screwdriver and I pressed against this and this come off. So at that point with my fuel lines disconnected, which this one here has a, a tab in the center, you pull it back and then you push this section of the tab this way forward against it and it releases the fuel line the evap the evap same way you push this in i had to squeeze it with pliers because it's pretty rigid and it pulls off the evap these uh fuel lines are pretty expensive from the dealer so you don't want to break them tabs because you can't go you can't go to the hardware store or auto store and get the tabs anyways it's a pretty simplistic design under here i mean there's not much uh hindering it but once I had this disconnected, I had this plug disconnected from the tank that had the clip, the lock, and then you push down on it, pulls off. And then for the gas, uh, the fuel tank pressure transducer sensor, you push the tab down, pull that back. That frees all the harness up. Like I said, there's, there's enough room on that harness that you could lower that tank on the, on the ratchet straps and let it hang there and uh, access everything up there to disconnect this, 
disconnect this and this. And then this here is the EVAP line, which I disconnected underneath the truck. I showed you on the back, by the back axle. You press down on it and it slides over and it releases. Anyways, uh, it didn't take, it wasn't, it didn't take much at all. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do before I reinstall this is that I'm going to drain all the fuel out of the tank and try to reach in there and clean the tank out if I can. What, what I can reach should be good enough for me. And then this way when I reinstall it, it won't have, it won't have a little over a quarter tank of gas in it because it was pretty heavy bringing it down. Uh, I'll probably do another video on the reinstallation. Uh, but like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a quick note of what I did and uh, what you guys will got to look forward to. It's not a, it's not a real hard job. Um, when you reassemble it, in case I don't do another video, when you reassemble it, the rear drive shaft, the torque specs on it are 76 foot-pounds. The tank strap bolts, which are these, are 35 foot-pounds. Now, my mistake was when I took these down, I didn't pay attention to that and notice that one was slightly longer than the other. So I'm going to have to figure out which one went to the front strap, which one went to the back strap. So you guys, if you guys are doing this, pay attention to them, to them two bolts and where they belong. Uh, what I'm going to undo the ring with is I made a spanner wrench at work. I got access to a metal shop, so I made a spanner wrench that will hook onto the ring and allow me to smack it with a wood mallet or a dead blow hammer and get that off. You don't want to use a metal hammer because like like I said you're working around gasoline so because yeah I still can smell gasoline right now to break that ring loose and then I marked the ring so that I knew which way which way it went so I reinserted it it would go back onto the same tabs and it tells me which way is up. Uh, on the tank itself there's an arrow here and on the pump, there's an arrow. Uh, here's the new Ford OEM pump I purchased from a place called Next Gear Auto Parts. They're, on, they're in East Point, Michigan, off of 8 Mile Road. And they give me an OEM Ford pump for $89 off eBay, free shipping. So that, that was pretty nice. Uh, like I said, it's just not much to this. You get those lines disconnected without breaking them tabs and you get this evap line disconnected and you disconnect this line you disconnect the harness and that tank will come down out of there nice and nice and easy uh, it's not a hard job at all don't be afraid of it don't be intimidated by it uh, what I'm going to do though when I reinstall it before I reinstall the tank, I'm going to take this EVAP line off of these two fittings and I'm going to install this first and then bring that up because this way I don't have to wrestle around with this thing. And then I can just connect these two lines back up. And this hose right here, uh, when I was letting the tank down, the frame was set here and it was kind of bumping the frame. It was holding it up a little bit. So what I did is I just, all I had to do was slide the tank over a little bit and then it, it was enough to get this to clear and it come right down. No problems. Uh, anyways, like I said, I'll probably do a video on the assembly part of it. Uh, like I said, I'm working by myself and I'm holding a cell phone, so I'll do what I can. Anyways, good luck, guys.